Today I'm in Hull, or Kingston-upon-Hull. I've walked along a busy main road called Springbank out of the town centre and all of a sudden on my right hand side I'm in the old general cemetery. As you can see there's no sort of fence or gateway. You just come off the pavement and straight into the cemetery here. I have no knowledge of this cemetery at all, so we're just going to walk around and look at any inscriptions that are slightly different or memorials which were carved a little differently. Right in front of the gate we here we have one to Joseph Wright of this town, an architect. Very large tomb here, and this one's marked out to Mary Hannah, the infant daughter of William and Maria. A tall obelisk standing here, and it says it's John Leake, JP, solicitor, alderman, and four times mayor of the borough. I'm having trouble reading the inscription on this one, but it has a likeness of the gentleman concerned. Another very tall one just inside the entrance here, and the inscription on it has a an unusual surname. A fascinating story on this one. John Graville, master mariner who during a period of 40 years engaged in northern whale and sea fisheries. He died on board the steam whaler Diana in Davis Straits, 1855. His death resulted from exposure, anxiety and shortness of provisions and fuel during a four months imprisonment in the ice. Surrounded by all the dreariness and perils of a cold and desolate Arctic winter, the subsequent death of 13 of the crew from scurvy and starvation rendered the voyage one of the most disastrous and melancholy on record. A little bit more beneath that. This is quite an amazing graveyard. There are some well-worn paths through it, it's, it's used, uh, but tucked away amongst the trees you get groups of these gravestones like these here. One here to Henry John Hurrell, glass and china dealer who departed 1888. One to Thomas Lee, master mariner, drowned at sea, 1855, aged 45 years. Here's a very special one. This is in memory of children who having lost their fathers were cared for in the Port of Hull Society's Sailors Orphan Home. And then we have a list of names, aged nine years, 10 years, 10 years, 14 years, 8, 13, 12, 7, and 14. I won't try and pronounce that name, but he was from Austria, master mariner and shipbroker in this city. And underneath is his wife. This one really has uh, some places that need exploring. This area looks totally overgrown, and yet, Tucked away in the undergrowth is a very clear stone. Frank Simpson, formerly of Brixton in Surrey. Surrounded by trees and bushes. And another one in the undergrowth here, Henry Brown. A very large tomb. And this one here to Alexander Carr, who died at Acab in India, age 27. And further down, his father, Alexander Carr, who was a Humber pilot. And through the undergrowth there is another large memorial. That's going to be rather too much to fight my way through to. And just beyond that tree there is another stone. 
one here with the image of a sailing ship at the top and this is John Miller master of the ship Balcaman who was drowned at Ansley Bay 1863 this one has an engraving of an angel in a position of prayer and underneath we read that Elizabeth the wife of Robert Wilson after a long and painful illness departed this life. One here in what looks like German. I'll leave you to read that and translate it but I can see the word captain in there. This one's to William Gibson a shipbuilder of this town. Close by it mentions Robert Thomas Jones, a master mariner and an assistant of the Hull Trinity House. One here to what I would imagine would be a nun, Theresa de Decker, in religion Sister Marie, born at Antwerp and died at Hull in 1914. One here with the broken column and the wreath round it and the inscription at the base is to James Ford, a coal merchant of this town. And the one here is most unusual, it's made of iron. The whole thing is presumably cast iron, wrought iron, but the inscription has gone. But most unusual, I've never seen one like that before. Close by is this one, Sidney Hutton, a master mariner, killed by enemy action on SS Albano, 1940, age 53. This graveyard is really something special. There are so many interesting stones in it, and yet it doesn't appear to be looked after at all. Amazing. This one is to John Marshall, late of HM Customs, and you can see just above his name we've got the Freemason symbol. There's a group of three stones here with this very unusual surname, Oxtoby. All three Oxtoby. Edward S. Price, Royal Navy, late commanding officer of HMS Nimble who died in 1902. There's one in a foreign language here. I can't really help you with any more information than that. Patrick Poulsen. This inscription made me smile. Thomas Bailey, the patient, affectionate husband of Sarah Jane Bailey. I like the description, he was patient. Here's one to George C. Roberts and quite a lot of information, uh, quite a lot of nice thoughts about him placed underneath and he was Alderman, Town Clerk and Mayor. Another one where we have a likeness of the gentleman, although this one's rather worn. This is Henry Wanacott, late pastor of Albion Congregational Church in Hull. A tall obelisk here and the inscription is to John Richardson of Richardson and Sons Bond Street Hull and also of William Richardson the last surviving member of the above firm who died in 1907 Richardson and Sons Another interesting and unusual surname here, Grummet, Adelaide Grummet and Joseph Grummet. Part way down this one, we have John who was killed at sea by falling from the mast on board the ship Fiji in the South Pacific Ocean in 1876, age 19. And then beneath that, 
we have Albert Edgar, the sixth son, who was lost with all hands on a voyage from Melbourne in the summer of 1894, aged 22 years. Although there's no fence between this old cemetery and this very busy road, there are a pair of gates here. So this must have been fenced off originally. So these are the original gates into the General Cemetery in Hull. Henry William Kemp, Canon of York, 19 years Master of the Charter House Hull, and 32 years the Vicar of St John's in Hull. Here alongside the path is another one of these amazing iron memorials. Uh, again, I can't see the inscription on it, but it is something that's quite unusual, I've not seen elsewhere. Further into the cemetery, there is this huge lump of stone here, a very large memorial. And the inscription is to Joseph Rylands, merchant and ship owner. The detailed carving on this is just amazing. And on the end we have the name John Woe Esquire, a merchant. In a clearing in the woods here is an elaborate one. And opposite one of a very similar design. This one is to Stafford Reeves and Timothy Reeves. There's an area here in the woods where they've laid a number of stones flat on their backs, obviously moved them from where they were originally. I'm not quite sure why they would do that. Presumably seemed like a good idea at the time. Here in the undergrowth is another of the metal ones. I think this is probably the remains of one. I think it's probably been damaged. But these are very unusual. Amongst the undergrowth here, inscription at the bottom here, George Henry Chapman, grandson, who was accidentally drowned in 1882, aged 17 years. I'm here to uh, Alexander Marshall. What interested me more was the inscription at the bottom here, Horatio Ross Watt Marshall, the Universal Caterer. Part of the cemetery has been marked off as a Quaker burial ground. The Quakers have very simple inscriptions, don't have any elaborate stones. A typical inscription would read like this. In the corner of the Quaker area is one to Sir James Reckitt, who owned Reckitt Pharmaceuticals in the town and was responsible for setting up this Quaker area in the, in the cemetery, Sir James Reckitt. There's an open area here, and down here is a recent stone. In this area of the cemetery, over 10,000 people from the Hull workhouse are buried in unmarked graves. This one commemorates James Myers. Upwards of 30 years, he was a joiner and labour master at the Hull workhouse and his wife Ellen. And this very tall one here, this commemorates Alderman John Fountain, 40 years member of the Hull Town Council, 30 years guardian and 21 years governor of the Hull Incorporation of the poor, vice chairman of the Hull Infirmary Board, chairman and member of various committees. And a very tall memorial here. And this reads, erected by the Hull General Cemetery Company to commemorate the great visitation of cholera 
1849 and to remember the 1,860 inhabitants of this town who died from it. 700 of those are buried in this cemetery. It kind of puts the Covid pandemic into perspective when nearly 2,000 people can die in one town. I'll leave you now with some parting shots of the quite amazing older part of the cemetery. There is so much to see here, so much to explore. I do hope they can do something about making sure it is preserved and doesn't deteriorate any further. Anyway, this is quite a find as a cemetery. It goes into the top tier of those I've been to see. So this is Hull General Cemetery. Till the next time.